Hey everybody, today I just wanted to briefly discuss the five lifts that I talk about in my arm wrestling strength standards video. Gotten a lot of questions about how to do these lifts correctly, what's the form, what handle are you using, you know, what if I do it this way instead of that, and a lot of confusion. So I just wanted to show you guys what I mean and, and tell you why I do it this way. So, you know, hopefully everybody can learn something from this. Okay. The first lift is the riser lift, all right? Uh, I'm referring to doing it with free weights like this. You could do it on a table with a cable as well, but there are variables that make that a little bit more difficult to assess. So let's just stick with it this way. This is the easiest and simplest way everybody can do. You can use a belt. You either just grab it normally with your hand and have the uh, belt going over your knuckle, or you can put your hand through a looped belt and then grab both sides of the looped belt so that both sides go over your knuckles. Either way is fine, the weight should be about the same. I just prefer this way so you don't have to squeeze the belt, okay? You start with your forearm roughly parallel to the ground. It can be a little bit off angle and it won't really change anything because the failure point is here. And you start with your riser locked, okay? And then you just weight off the ground, weight off the ground, okay? There are a lot of reasons why I prefer to do riser this way and that really deserves its own video, so don't worry too much about that right now, but that's the movement, and uh, it pretty much guarantees that your failure point is gonna be here in your riser. Again, all that stuff kind of belongs in its own video, but that's the, the next lift is straight posting back pressure. This is what most people refer to when they're talking about back pressure. You just do it on a table with a low pulley angle, a strap on your hand, okay? So nothing fancy, just a hand through a loop. You want to keep the angle at the start. You want the angle between the strap and your forearm to be roughly perpendicular. Plant the elbow and rock back, okay? Now, the reason for why this setup is this way and not a higher pulley angle or, you know, why you use a strap deserves its own video, but this is how this lift is done, okay? The key here is you don't drag, okay? So you don't move your elbow to the back of the pad. You can lift a lot more weight that way, but you're lifting it with your lat, you're not lifting it with your elbow flexion. And this is really just a test of elbow flexion, like static hammer curl in a, with a supported elbow, okay? Now, if you don't have a table and a cable system, you can do this with free weights. You're not gonna be able to lift as much without your form breaking down because without having your elbow supported, lifting it like this, you're you're gonna kinda lose this, uh, lose this vertical humerus position and, and you'll kind of lift it like that because most people's shoulders just aren't strong enough to keep their humerus vertical when they're lifting maximum weight for their elbow flexion. Uh, you can do it on a pre-sure bench and that's fine. You just have to make sure that you go through the point where your forearm is parallel to the ground, okay? A lot of people will do back pressure with their forearm really vertical on a preacher bench and they'll do something like this and think that they're lifting the same and, and it's not, okay? You want, you, you need that angle to you need your form to go through the parallel to the ground point if you're going to use a belt in free weights. But otherwise, yeah, support the elbow, lock it in, don't drag, and uh, there's your lift. Oh, okay, the locked pronation lift is basically the same as the straight back pressure lift. The difference is you're going to do it with your thumb through the loop, okay? And you start with your pronator locked, and you just sit there and post, okay? Same thing, you can do this with free weights, but you want your elbow to be supported, otherwise you'll end up kind of lifting it like that. You're not starting with your palm facing you and then having to pronate the weight up. You're not having to close the elbow angle. You start in there, nice and locked tight, and come back. And as you start to fail, you'll start to lose your pronation before your elbow flexion most of the time. Some people, some weirdos, their pronation is actually stronger than their elbow flexion, but it takes specific training to make that happen and it's, it's not that common. So most people, when they start to fail, they'll fail by seeing their palm face them instead of just losing their elbow angle like this, okay? So you just lock it in the same position that you would with the back pressure lift. You just have the belt on your thumb and you go. You can also do this lift by grabbing onto the belt instead of having the belt on your thumb. That's fine too. For most people, this is gonna be a little bit weaker because you're moving the connection point a little further out and you're adding another joint of instability in the way, but it's a valid way to do the lift. There's nothing wrong with it as long as your wrist is conditioned to doing this kind of lift. So you can do that lift like this as well, and that's fine. Okay, so the next lift is just wrist wrench side pressure, okay? Now, I discuss why you use a wrist wrench instead of a rolling handle in some depth in my 
uh, exercise selection for dummies video. So I won't get into details on that. Just use a medium sized wrist wrench, a high pulley angle and straight sideways across the table. Okay. For this lift, you start in somewhere in the middle of the table. It doesn't have to be exact. And, you're, and you don't have to start there in a starting position like you're in the WAF, okay? This is testing how, how good the connection of your elbow is and how much you can keep together and drive sideways, okay? Because if you can do it during a match from any position, it's kind of conceivable that you can mimic that with a wrist wrench going sideways, okay? Now, uh, more junior arm wrestlers, they're going to struggle and they're going to end up separating this way. Their shoulder will lead and they'll kind of drag it down with their wrist and, and pull it with their bicep. That's normal because you just don't have a conditioned enough elbow for that. And more advanced arm wrestlers are going to be able to commit their shoulder and drive sideways while uh, relying on the inner, uh, inner elbow connected tissues. Okay. And if you get really, really wild conditioning and, and good strength, you can even do it with your elbow kind of separated and almost baseball pitcher this thing sideways. Uh, it's hard to get to that point with any really strong weight and it's rare for that to be the strongest way to do this. But there are some people out there like Todd Hutchings who that is the strongest way for him to lift. He, he'll actually lift more like that than he will with the shoulder committed like the way I do it. So um, yeah, wrist wrench, high angle, coming straight across the table. You just, just start, load up and, and go, okay? Okay, the last movement is the containment with the Mazarenko eccentric handle, okay? So probably all seen these eccentric handles, you know, this is a simple movement. You just lock it into position. There's a, a block here that keeps you from cupping it too deep. With one hand and you just lift it, okay? You don't take your second hand, and lift it up and then hold it, okay? That's not a lift, all right? You don't get to do that in a deadlift. You don't get to have spotters lift the weight up you and then you hold it, all right? You actually have to lift it from a dead stop. That's the lift, okay? Um, the reason I picked this movement and not one of the other handles is that there's a lot of data for arm wrestlers of all levels that use this handle. And what I've noticed is that there's actually a pretty tight correlation between your strength level as an arm wrestler and what you can lift on this. It's a stronger correlation with this than back pressure or rising or even pronation, okay? Being able to cup with one of these handles a certain weight is a stronger indicator of your arm wrestling level than any of those other lifts. So not 100% but it, it, it does seem to track pretty well with a, a pretty large amount of data, okay? Understand, this isn't necessarily the best exercise for developing your cup. Like I would do other tools in order to make my wrist flexion and my, my containment better. But if you just wanna test it, you just wanna do that max effort lift, I found that this is a very good tool for that. And again, while nothing's 100%, I think it correlates very strongly with uh, the level of your hand and wrist as an arm wrestler, so. That's it. Uh, that's it for all the lifts, guys. I hope you learned something here and uh, see you next time.